Okay, now we are going into segment three, talking about challenges and obstacles, and it looks like we're starting with uh, Victor. So, Victor, Victor, what's your uh, Victor, Victor? What's that? <laughs> challenges and obstacles. Uh, okay, oh. a big challenge. And, oh, hold on. Uh, let, 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 me, let me ask the question so the okay, viewers well, out there know what's going on. So, yeah, this topic is about challenges and obstacles. So I'm asking him the question, what are the biggest challenges you face when running zero prep sessions? Uh, well, Mr. Max kind of touched on this earlier. It's like uh, as as the campaign progresses and things get a little bit more convoluted, and you know you've made up NPCs and cities and plot hooks and stuff on the fly. You might have to keep track on thing track of things. So you know, start taking notes. Um, you know, and you're allowed to. Uh, so there there might be a bit of note keeping involved. And another challenge is that you might have, at least initially, you might have players that are too passive. That uh, mm -hmm. they, they they are used to games that are very railroady. They're used to being told like, okay, now you guys are traveling to uh, you know uh, a dragon's keep, and you're gonna fight uh, the dragon wizard over there. So if if you plop those kinds of players suddenly in just like a sandbox where you know they're allowed to do whatever the, whatever they want, uh, they might struggle with that. Uh, that comes up a lot in my experience. So you know you kind of have to. Uh, Educate them, I guess, and guide them along into uh, you know your zero prep uh, sandbox philosophy. Um, and yeah, th those are actually the the, the two most uh, pressing matters that I've encountered personally. So again, I, I some of these might be a little bit of repeats, but uh, I've noticed that some people watch video one and not video four, or video three and not video two. So uh, if it seems repeating, well, apologize, but. How do you handle situations where players derail the session in unexpected ways? Uh, if it's if it's in an unexpected way that still fits with the general setting that I'm going with, and it fits their actual character concepts and stuff, I'll go along with it. If it's just like some nonsense, then I'll be like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. Uh, I am the ultimate arbiter of what goes and doesn't go. I'm on, I'm the ultimate arbiter of the setting of the genre. And uh, if I say that, uh, no, you're not pulling a PlayStation 2 out of your backpack to uh, play from uh, Tekken, <laughs> then, because, uh, you know, you're in the middle of, like, 14th century, uh, wait, wait, you know. How am I supposed post? to get my Final yeah. Fantasy fix if I can't pull out the PlayStation? Yeah. <laughs> and, and and this is actually a thing that actually happened to me, too. So I'm not just pulling it oh, really? out of my ass. <laughs> yeah, like a player just like, yeah, I'm so I am pulled my PlayStation 2 out of my backpack. It's like, we're in the middle of a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Where did you get a PlayStation 2? Like, <laughs> like it's like 300 years after the war like it's heavy like, too you're lugging that actually around. and actually the war happened in the 1980s so like okay but uh uh so yeah you know you, you have to put, you have to put your foot down like still sometimes like but again the, don't just let them walk all over your setting and all over your game and let them do some gonzo nonsense you're the ultimate arbiter of what uh, happens okay tb what are the biggest challenges you faced when running zero prep sessions? Um, I think it's just getting out of your own way. Uh, you're, you are your own worst critic. And sometimes you have a session and you're like, that was terrible. And zero prep doesn't work. And that was bad. But then I think about like, well, I had prep sessions where I was like, mm -hmm. had the same mentality. So it's, it's not that. It's just that that's just what happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also say it, there's there's an upfront cost. So you got to read your rules. And I, like I said earlier, that seems to be a very difficult thing to get people to do is to like read their rule books and understand them, know where the, the tools they need are. Um, I think it just comes down to, there's a lot of casuals in the hobby and they don't understand the, the time commitment that RPGs are, even if you're zero prep, like you, you still have to read your rule book. You still have to, um, run a game you know and sessions can be hours long so it's like it's just a big time commitment sort of thing mm -hmm. um it, so it's not saving you time on that front uh and i'd say that one of the other biggest ones is again we mentioned this before is it this is why i don't say it's a one true way thing is it's not going to work with every game as smoothly and as easily as it is with a with an exploration based game like say traveler or dungeons and dragons you know because something like like I just use Call of Cthulhu as, as an example, something like Call of Cthulhu or let's say Lex Arcana or things like that. Those kinds of games, while really awesome and really cool, and I love those games, they lack a lot of the zero prep tools that you need. And the general structure of them uh, makes it more advanced and more difficult to do. So you have to be able to pick the right 
game rule set and tools in order to 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 use this. And you might have to make your own tools if the game doesn't have it. So, or take them from someplace else. Yeah, that's all I'd say. Okay. <laughs> so, can you describe a time when a lack of preparation led to a difficult moment and how you resolved it? Oh man, that's a hard one off the top of my head. Uh, so I would say, like in the white box game, um, so I was generating content, and it, it just it just sort of made me sad. And and this is this could happen. This can happen with your games too. And so it leads to like situations like this where the 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 village that their players had made a base of was being attacked by a vampire and through roles determined that the, that the vampire had kidnapped a, a young girl. And so the players are like, we're heroes. Let's go save the young girl. And they entered the dungeon and they got scared and ran away. And then weeks passed. And now that little girl's probably dead. So, <laughs> uh, so now there's a, so now there's a situation where it's like, do we, uh, it, it dr drastically changed the, the, the situation in the, in the world. And it kind of can create, you can kind of sometimes get um, storylines, I guess, that are that emerge that don't go anywhere, that the players can kind of give up on. And from a mental perspective, as a game master, you have to be okay with that. Even for me, that can be kind of difficult because it's sort of like, well, I kind of wanted to see what happened to the vampire in this uh, that was harassing the village. And, you know, um, he's still out there. He's probably still lurking around. And so the players could easily pick it back up, but now there's like this whole situation of they didn't they didn't save the girl. So <laughs> what do we what do we do now? You know, it's funny um, you say that because I'm literally envisioning my timelines as you're talking about this. It's probably not mm -hmm. the appropriate term, but that's just what I call them. Where it's like, yeah, you can you can either save the girl or or kill the vampires, but the world's going to move on, and you can only be at one place at one time. So yeah, yeah. So okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's good stuff. All right, Mr. Max, what are the biggest challenges you face when running zero prep sessions? Me? I don't really face like I've been doing it for so long. I don't like the biggest challenges is I I sometimes you come up with something on the fly, right? And then like you realize maybe what you just like you need to give an answer right 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 away because like the player are talking on something and you don't have something. And uh, so you make up something on the spot, and then you realize, take you a second to realize that, oh, okay, no, that goes a problem for this. And now you have to justify it, right? And so that can be a problem. Like in the Witch of Duncan Vale game that we did online, like on my channel that was GMing, right? At some point, like a player, like uh, they're investigating a potential witch and that ran away, and he's going to read the diary. The players say, I'm picking up, I get a diary and I'm starting reading. And I didn't have anything prepped for that, obviously. So I just say, oh, you open the diary and there's a, some ba some mundane stuff and a bunch of page missing, right? And then I thought I, thought I got away from it <laughs> because I didn't want to fucking make up something from a little girl diary on the spot, right? Then other players say, oh, I take some uh, charcoal from my bag and I rub on the last page to get the impression of what was written. <laughs> so now, okay. I thought I was away from it. I got away with it. So now I have yeah. to come up with something on the spot. And I do, right? I just like, okay, she said that. And I make up something. But then I have to live up by that one thing, right? And kind of derail in a sense. So would you say very, that a very, lot of times the thing. nuance, the little things can be a problem? It's because you have to keep the world consistent, right? Mm -hmm. So they, you have to keep the world consistent. So if I'm just saying something there on the spot, and then I realize, oh, wait that goes against what I just said a, a scene before or something like that. Well, now you have to figure out a way to make it match, right? Well, it could be like an unreliable narrator. It could be somebody mistaken. Somebody, somebody was lying to you, right? But, oh, the blacksmith said something else. And now like, oh, you read, you find something else in the diary. Well, maybe the blacksmith was lying after all, right? I didn't know that. I just figured it out now, right? <laughs> just like, all right. But uh, so th there's those things that can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay. But for me, that's part of the fun. That's that's a big part of the game. Like I love having to be on the seat of my on the on the, the edge of my seat, thinking on my feet. You know, my, I play with very smart player that always come up with with new interesting thing. They're very active, they're very very proactive player. So I'm always like, 
oh, okay, no, okay. And I always come up, with, come up with something and they're always like one step ahead of me and then I have to like catch up and then like go ahead a bit, right? Just like, for me, that's the game. For me, that's the essence of the game right there. Okay, so what techniques do you use? Because I, again, and I'm asking you this because you're definitely on the heavier role play side. Uh, mm -hmm. What techniques do you use to manage pacing and plot development in zero prep games? I hate the word plot. I shouldn't have used that. But it's more like oh, the pacing. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good uh, question. Like we have like 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 I said, I have very proactive player, and we have this uh, thing that we do where like we we're very like strict about like going. We're basically always always in round, right? We always go in round. And we have those things like you say what your character, where, like Shana would used to say, right? Where your character is, what your character does, what your character say. Just just say that, and that's the perfect turn, right? And then move mm -hmm. on. And keep your turn short, and you'll have more turn, but other people can get to do stuff. And then so then you can you do this, you do one action, and then we'll come back to you. Don't worry about it, right? The next guy is gonna do that one action. It starts to break down when players start to go on and on and on and on and want to do a lot on their turn. Say, hey, hey. Do one thing and we'll come back to you. Unless somebody like does something else and the change change, but we need to allow this change because everybody is there to play the game, everybody can partake. So for, for us, that's the big, the big, like uh the big help, right? And that's also like a, a question of trust. If you trust that we're gonna come back to you, you don't have to set up for the next 10 minutes of the game. Hmm. Just say what you're doing now. And you have you have the trust of the GM and the trust of the other player that you'll get another turn. You don't have to set up everything up. Like you don't have to put your character on autopilot, right? And now you're good for the next half hour. No, just just say what you're doing in the moment, and we'll come back to you. And you see what you're doing in the moment, and we'll come back to you, right? And everybody like get their turn, and that keep the pacing going pretty, okay. pretty, pretty nicely, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, anything you guys want to piggyback off each other oh, there? Else, I kind uh, of have a universal question yeah, for all of you. There's, there's another thing also about like uh, the challenge with zero prep, which is sure. not a personal challenge. But I think the challenge for the hobby in itself is that promoting zero prep is not, it makes it very hard to sell stuff because oftentimes people want to sell stuff to help with your prep, right? They want to sell you setting, they want to mm. sell you module, yeah. they want to sell you table and chart and stuff like that, right? Which for people that do zero prep with chart, that I guess that help, that's a legitimate way to go. But I think that there's a lot of people that are probably opposed to zero prep. Because of that, right? Because it's like, yeah. well, what do you sell then? Well, you don't need nothing. You don't need, you don't need it, all it, it, it goes against the orthodoxy a little bit of like, you know, that the hobby. Also, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, want, I want to say like a personal challenge for me with Zero Pub is like, I, I suck at uh, like conversations with NPCs and stuff. Like <laughs> I, I'm really terrible at coming up with like responses of like NPCs on the fly. And then like eventually I'm like, oh, I've used that creepy witch voice like three times in a row for three different NPCs now. So, you know, because <laughs> yeah. it's like panic. I'm like, oh, she's a creepy witch. Ooh. And then, <laughs> so, you know, that's definitely a challenge, but that's a personal challenge. It's like, that's just an aspect of improvisation that I'm terrible at. Uh, I'm for me, it's at names. Text, Don't ask yeah. me to name anything. Name like if, if it's just pure text, I can like, Conversate my ass off, but that you know, <laughs> then I can like take like five minutes to actually think of what the guy is saying instead of just having to do it think, on the fly. But <laughs> I think like one thing that helps out with NPC on the fly, it's to uh, assign them personality from people you know in your real life, right? Oh, that's yeah. you know that's my uncle Bill. Like I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna yeah. make this NPC like my uncle Bill, so you oh, can I just put that in your Bill. note. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you put it in. It's true. You put that in your note, and you can always go back to it, right? We always you know, we and might not be exactly accurate, right? But way over our construction of what we know, right? We can think yeah. about like this, your your brother or your 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 whatever, like right? just like think about how they would act in a certain situation. Right? Okay, now you're playing this role in my mind yeah. as a GM, right? So that helps a lot. So then it helps with the note, keeping the character consistent, going back to it and coming up with somebody on the fly, right? Just like, oh, that's my old boss from this place. I, I don't right? go with fictional characters, so my 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 standard yeah, that, that works too, right? My standard witch is just like the wicked witch, and she's like, oh, yeah. don't me. <laughs> and like you know, but you keep doing that for the rest yeah, of the works. stream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I don't do when it comes to like you know the the was it uh, I can't remember the rhyme, the baker and the candlestick maker. I forget the first one. Uh, I think that they Taylor sold a spy. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. When it comes to just mundane, you know, going to the proverbial or metaphoric buying rope, uh, I don't put any 
anything yeah. into those characters. Hell, half the time I might even hand wave some of that stuff unless there really needs to be a meaningful uh, conversation there, depending on what the, what the players you know are looking for. But, but that's for, the thing you don't know if it's going to be meaningful or not, right? Uh, yeah, I do. They just want to buy rope. Okay, we're the buy rope. Um, but if it's something more, because I don't in my fantasy games, I don't have magic shops. I think they're stupid. Um, so you have to get the ingredients for it. Well, now you're going to be doing a back and forth with the alchemist. That's going to be role played out. And I'll give him a personality. Anything that's like a patron to the players or a king or a noble or somebody that they're going to come back to or that's important. I will think of that. But for the mundane person, hey, I want to talk to some lady on the street. OK, that's just going to be me. <laughs> Pretend I'm a chick for a moment and let's move on. They're going to be the Wicked Witch again. Yeah. Uh, but question that I want for all of you guys, and this is just uh, this doesn't need to be, have a lot of in depthness, but uh, see how you guys respond to it. For the more modern crowd, who's used to things like challenge ratings and balanced encounters, how do you ensure that the game remains balanced and fair in air quotes without prepanned encounters or scenarios? I don't care about balance. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> great answer okay. yeah. no the, I, I expected this answer and I, but i thought it was an important one to get so that people understand that balance and, and at least for me and victory actually you should answer first uh, i don't really care either uh especially in a more sandbox game anything can happen and it's up to you to uh to um what's the words uh make sure that you don't just like stumble into danger maybe maybe when you're in the wilderness sneaking through a creepy forest be a little bit careful so not everything is just going to immediately surprise you and kill you so, so we should be know, singing trail songs at the top of our voice during no, no. Uh, something called the forest yeah. of doom <laughs> yeah. if you're like doing like one of my games and i love that modern kind of, the kind of stuff if you like you know like i said earlier like that special forces team and your your job is to like take out the cartel don't just like start driving and then just like drive right into a checkpoint and get like riddled with AK bullets. Maybe you know that's so unfair. And, uh, why yeah. was the why was the guard? How did he outgun yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. Right, I just wanted to throw that one out there because I just there's one of those things where I, I've heard kind of anecdotally well it's like you gotta build the encounters otherwise how do you know that they're fair? I'm like even as somebody who's less about zero prep than these guys, I don't care no. <laughs> yeah. no. Um, yeah, and balance first like it's like no games give you like a really like proper formula for balance that's fucking like hogwash because you never know where the party is depends on the player or smart the player and stuff like that right yeah and it doesn't matter like just don't assume that every encounter you're gonna face is an encounter you can defeat sometimes you're gonna face something like that is stronger than you somebody sometimes you're gonna face something that you can just fucking crush right the goal shouldn't always be fight either and yeah there you go what I do for balance, I try to make sure that the player can always have an out. They can run away. They can <laughs> try to negotiate their way out, stuff like that, right? Don't pick the fight with the people that is clearly going to crush your face, right? Just saying, you know. Yeah. And and even those systems that do, like, try to incorporate balance, like 5e has, like, the challenge rating. That that's yeah. That stuff never works. Uh, nope. I've, I've won 5e extensively. I've had, like, players kill stuff that's, like, 5, even 10, like, uh, levels uh, above them. And then they the next uh, encounter, they struggled with stuff that's, like, challenge rating 3. Like, you know, so, it, like, even that stuff doesn't really work. So just don't worry nope. about it. Whatever happens, happens. And it, like I said, it's up to them to, um, to play smart and mitigate, uh, you know... Uh, the danger that they went into. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, so just as a reminder for folks, some random RPG live stream airs live on Fridays at 6 p.m. Central time, except for the last Friday of the month, because that's our members only live stream. We don't do enough for our members, but we try to do a little something. And that's one of them. Once this live stream ends, the full live stream will remain available on YouTube for members only. Well, these four discussion segments will post for the public a month later now some people have sent me messages like hey max you forgot to take it down sometimes i don't get to it until the next day so if you have the link you could still possibly watch it but it will be taken down uh oh we got a super chat just popped in right in perfect timing because i was about to hit the chats so we'll do that super chat boom he says the idea of balance and combat is a 5e problem with the darn cr i think it's a 3e problem it started yeah, there maybe. But yes, thank you for the $10. But you're right, it's a Watsy problem and a Pathfinder problem, which is just, you know, Watsy clone. 
Well, another way to do balances, and you and you kind of touched this on this earlier, Max. Just because a dragon appeared doesn't mean that he's two feet in front of you, uh, about to breathe fire on you. Maybe he's flying far overhead back to his lair, or he's like going somewhere. He's getting groceries. Like I don't know. But like, <laughs> it's just a, you're level one. You see a dragon flying overhead, and you're like, oh, that's scary. And no, but now you know there's a dragon, and you can plan for that. Maybe a level when if you make it to level five, you can plan to go raid his uh, horde or whatever. But yeah. every dragon encounter starts with round one. <laughs> just because you rolled like a hundred orcs doesn't mean that again they teleport in front of you maybe you're laying there under your elven cloaks in the woods like watching them as they're marching by and you're like oh I wonder what they're up to yep. and then you run or you back crest to a hill and you, and you find them. the encampment yeah. and now you can yeah. choose to talk to them yeah good luck or yeah. going around them or calling in an airstrike from that red dragon you saw in the last yeah. encounter <laughs> or you can go back to town and warn them and now you've got this whole plot point about there's yep. an orc army on the way to like do something like what are we going to yep. do Exactly. Right Encounter itself. doesn't mean it's these aren't computer games. Encounter doesn't yeah. mean we have to fight it. No, yeah. you can still use your brain. You're still allowed. <laughs> <laughs> what? And then uh, this guy, I thought this was an interesting comment. So I posted it. said you can boost player investment by reading the backgrounds and do tie ins to developing the story. I love that. Uh, uh, I love about that. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't really like big player backgrounds for the most part unless you're running a very specific type of game it's not really needed. I'll tell you I do, one thing, but I like yeah. it in the free league sense where it's oh, yeah. one sentence. You yeah. have a dark secret. You have a, a a a shtick. I forget what it's actually called, and you have a one sentence relationship with each of the other other characters. Because um, I also I'm with Heathen Dog on this one. I absolutely believe that players should be making their characters together. Mm -hmm. You know, now, after that, don't send me 10 pages of your history. My favorite one being, true story, assassin killed the prince and is on the run, but he's first level. I'll tell you what I, what I see, like, what, like <laughs> regarding that, I think those long background story, right? Those long backstory, they are a symptom of story game. They are a symptom of railroad game because people create character. They invest themselves in their character. They like the character they created. And they want to get a chance to tell a story with them mm -hmm. before ending it to the GM for the GM to tell the story, right? Yeah. When you do no prep game and when the character are more in charge and the character, the, the player are more in charge and they can lead to the action of the character where the action go, you don't feel the need of having this long background. You can start a character that's fresher and a bit newer in the world because now the interesting part of the story, you're gonna you're gonna play it, you're gonna role play it, you know, you're gonna do it live, yeah. right? In the session. If the character, if the GM is gonna put like a well, it's just gonna tell a story with your character, yeah, then then yeah, well, that's my chance to tell a story. Yeah. Right? You know, it's never come up, and I hope it never does. But like in Bear's game, I've never even thought about Athane's family. Does he have a brother or sister? I mean, he probably does. He lived on a farm, so he probably's got like nine of them. But it's never come up, and so I've never even thought about that. If it should have, only thing I know is that my dad was a merchant and a farmer. We used to go yep. to town, and I joined the militia. Those are the only things that I know about my character, and now I'm basically on a uh, 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 King Arthur quest of some sort. Like, wait, what happened to my life? You know. Yeah. We talk about a lot, like ab about like increasing resolution to play. Right, you start with a lower resolution, and as you play, your character get more defined, the world mm -hmm. get more yep. defined. Like you increase the resolution because we we add detail as we go mm -hmm. through it. That's fine. It's way more interesting to create your story to play, and then maybe you make it to level 10, and then the game pauses for a couple of years, and then the, the GM two years later is like, hey, we're, we're doing another game, but hey, you're welcome to bring back your old character. And now he's like all grizzled and scarred up, and he's like seen some shit. And you know, like that, that's awesome. So, plus, you, you can still have you still you can still have your private little headcanon about your character, but it's not mm -hmm. really the GM's job to like incorporate all your nonsense into his game if he doesn't want to. Yep. All right, John. I, I I I just want to reiterate that I know that these questions might seem redundant, even if they're just worded a different way. Part of this is because of how the video structure works, and part of it is that we're now specifically talking about challenges, and this is a a, cha a potential challenge. So, how do you ensure consistency, continuity, and verisimilitude in your entire campaign? We're not just talking a session now, an entire campaign without prior preparation. Um, I think if it's a good rule, uh, rule book, if it's a good game, the rules that you're using to generate content from, so for instance, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, um, it's or Gary Gygax already 
made every every possible role and option, for instance, on a random encounter table make sense within the assumed setting that Dungeons and Dragons is in, right? Um, I think for continuity and things like that, you got to take notes. I mean, you should be taking notes if you're prepping, even still, you know, mm -hmm. notes are good. Uh, for me personally, I like to do play reports. I just did a video earlier, like last week or the week before or something like that about, um, play reports. I like to write those up. I don't know if anyone ever reads them. There are some, I post them on my sub stack sometimes. You should give but, out experience points for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, like it's, it's nice to have the session end. And then I spend like 10, 15 minutes writing up the play report. You know, this mm -hmm. happened and this happened and this happened. And then to me that like, I have a, now I have a document that has all the, the <laughs> crucial points in it, but recapping it after the session helps me to remember what happened. And so mm -hmm. I, it becomes like a, it's more in my brain now. Yeah. Um, and that means that future things that can occur, um, I remember them better when, when you can also okay. again. you can also which, which, this might sound strange but you can also put it in like a more story context almost because you're cutting out all those pauses and all those walls and all those times where you're not like actually role playing and you're not really engaging with the story or engaging with the mechanics and then when you read it back you don't all that, you don't have all that extra stuff hanging on it's just the pure distilled like what this happened is what happened yeah <clears throat> yeah so how do you address potential burnout or fatigue from constantly improvising as a game master uh i don't think i'm ever gonna burn out i burned out with prep because the amount of work that i did and the reward that it gave me was not um i didn't see a balance there for this though it's for me like mr max said too i enjoy showing up and being like what rolling on some tables and like getting a prompt uh you know uh for an npc or a monster or something like that and and going how am i going to make this fit into the game world in a cohesive way i like that challenge for me like the players their challenge is interacting with the things that i am generating and throwing at them via the rules in the world for me it's like uh what are the players generating how am i reacting to it and how am i using the rules to generate content on the fly like that for me is the game that's the challenge as the referee so uh, would you would you say that it's almost like a a, a self rectifying problem that because you're not having to do all the prep and so forth it's harder to actually be burned out? I think so. I mean, I think the burnout at this point would only come from maybe like, oh, you know, I'm kind of tired of playing zero e at this point. I kind of I want a different flavor of a game. You know, that I could potentially see that, but <laughs> not not from the act of running the game. It's not from the from not from zero prep or running the game. Just maybe like a. I mean, maybe it'd be nice to have like a palate cleanser here or there of something, you know, but that that's potentially it for me. Okay. All right, Mr. Max Boivant, how do you ensure consistency, continuity, and verisimilitude in your campaign without prior preparation? Yeah, like that, we we mentioned, like, and John mentioned it again now, like taking notes, right? Like, yeah, of course, somebody like mentioned when something is created during the session, because that's the thing, right? A zero prep, the what we call prep, is stuff that is done outside the session, in between session and stuff like that, right? When you zero prep, a lot of that thing is taken care of during the session because you make up stuff as you go, but then it becomes canon. Like I said, you may, you take note for it. And when you come to the next session afterward, you, you have some prep now, in a sense, right? Because a world has been created in the previous session and event have been set in motion in the previous session, right? So when you do a campaign, the difference, what makes it zero prep, is that you don't do the prep between session. The prep is what you did in the previous session, right? You, you get what I mean? So you you keep note on that. You make sure your your worlds stay consistent. Like you don't you don't suddenly like just because you have a change of art, or you think you just watch a new movie and you want to integrate this new thing. No, no. Keep it simple. Keep it focused. You know, don't get distracted by new shiny stuff. And keep note of what happened. And like I said, like the more the more your campaign is going to progress, the more you're going to come in the session with like something established and notes and stuff ready and plot point ongoing. But it's not prep. This is what happened in the previous session. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you... No, I don't want to ask you that. That one wasn't for you. <laughs> uh, 
so what strategies do you employ to maintain player engagement during zero prep sessions? Let them, them control their character. That's the big one. Don't role play the play the cat. Like, you know, you're the GM, you can control the world, you can control the NPCs and stuff like that. Don't try to fucking control the character. Don't tell them how they feel. Don't tell them what they do. Don't tell them, like, don't move them around, right? That's the big thing. If you do that, you're gonna fucking kill. You know, no, they're just there for the ride. They're just along, they're just there like to oh, okay, tell okay, tell me a story. I'm gonna half listen, be on my phone, you know. Just like you might as well like just play a movie and then say, Oh, that's you, right? Just <laughs> like let them be in charge, let them lead, right? Let them bring idea, let them contribute to the world. That's the big thing. That's it. Short and okay. for once. No, no, that's 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 good. All right, uh, Victor, how do you ensure consistency, continuity, and verisimilitude in your campaign without prior preparation? I know I'm just good at that stuff. Like I'm, I'm just good at coming up with settings. Uh, and uh, in my head, they they have a certain they have a certain vibe. They have certain internal rules and logic. Uh, that I follow, and that doesn't mean that I have every detail planned out, but that does mean that if something new comes up, uh, I am able to incorporate it in some way in that setting where it makes sense. And uh, if, even when I'm like world building, realm weaving, whatever the hell you call it, like I change my mind constantly, I come up with new stuff constantly. I'll be watching a movie and it gives me some idea. And it's like, oh, that actually would be really cool for like if I added that to the magic system or whatever. So, yeah, just I don't know, just, just have a good framework in your head. Uh, but also don't be afraid to like modify and add to it. What do you do when you encounter, I guess, the equivalent of writer's block or a creative drought during a session? During a session? Like do, during the se session in particular? Or yeah. like, uh, well, that's never really happened because uh, during the session, I'm like fully engaged in that setting and I'm fully engaged in what the players are doing and they're like helping to drive the story along and stuff. So, uh, I, is this I, also an area where, say, tables and charts can help? Yeah, yeah, definitely, because they they will they will give you a lot of inspiration if you uh, use the mic, like you know that reverence that I uh, that I mentioned. Like I wasn't planning for that to be an immortal warrior that uh, can only be like he can only move on if he's defeated in an honorable combat. That just sprung him into my head when I rolled like a solo reverence that like appeared on this mountain path, and then I was like, why is there a reverence on this mountain path? I'm like, wait a minute. And then I came to that because if you remember in uh, the Elder Scrolls games, uh, there's like always this NPC called, uh, now I can't remember his name, like in the moment he's like an orc and he's like, like wearing samurai armor. And uh, if you defeat him in honorable combat, you, you, he gives you his armor and like his sword and stuff like that. So that was like the inspiration. So again, like, you know, it comes down to uh, having like a good knowledge of uh, pop culture and stuff like that. So uh i kind of lost track of the actual question there so <laughs> was just, uh, when you encounter some sort of like equivalent of writer's block or creative job yeah. like you just can't think them through but uh like yeah. i said my assumption with the question is when you guys are going to start talking about tables and and things like that to help uh, inspire you yeah. uh I didn't mean for it to be a leading question but you know just based on the conversation here yeah. that's what it so uh all right anything you guys want to piggyback on with uh with regard to that with each other I wanted to uh, add to the, the writer's block question, right? Just sure, like, yeah. At some point, like, you know, it's not that bad. Like, if you come with a blank, just come with something that is not that great. It doesn't yeah. matter. You'll get better at it with time, right? Just like, and after the session, you're going to think like, oh, I did that in that point. I was like drawing a blank. Now, after after the fact, I should have done that. Like, keep that in your pocket for the next time. Next time you come to a similar situation. It's a learned skill. You're going to develop it by doing it. Yeah, yeah, maybe didn't encounter anything really interesting that time, but you've learned, yeah. and uh, maybe the next time a similar situation comes up, you've got something in your pocket. Got it. Sorry, I'm being distracted by some comments here. By the way, getting a lot of good comments saying that they really like this panel, so uh, there we go. Um, <clears throat> all right, so the next uh, and final topic we've talked about the challenges we've talked about the what is it we've really dove into oh my god what are we going to do here but next we're going to talk about the benefits and rewards of zero prep gaming they've leaked some of their secrets i know but that's good uh we're going to talk we're going we're gonna, to i cannot talk <laughs> so we are going to focus on the benefits and rewards of zero prep gaming so uh let's check the chat out 
We've got uh, Gunther the Mad. I know I already read it, but you know it's $10. We'll read it again. It says, fine, I'll be the first. Thank you very much. Nagahide says, the idea of balance in combat is a 5e problem. The damn CR. We already read that one. Crafty. Thank you for the $10, sir. A character story is in front of... What? A character story is in front of him. Not behind. Yeah, yeah no, I agree with that. I agree with that. That first sentence. You didn't even have to write anymore after that first sentence. But he goes on to say, moviegoers are not given a campaign primer or backstories before watching the movie. Everything happens in the runtime. Yep. Well, well, like, I I, yeah. well like I said, um, it's fine to have your own little personal headcanon about your character. Uh, I do that. Like, you know, if I'm making, like, a hitman, like, character, like, yeah, like, in my head, it's like, he's done this for the mob, and he's done this for the CIA, or whatever, but that doesn't mean that the uh, that the DM is, like, obliged to incorporate all of that into the setting. That's just and my also, own personal little pleasure, and, yeah. Also, if I, if I can add something to that, yeah. uh, Victor, the it's good to have, because also you help with the motivation and stuff like that with your character, define your character, know how you're yeah. going to roleplay it. But also, like you can be fluid and flexible about those yeah. things, because as long as it hasn't been stated at the table during a session, it's not canon. Exactly. And exactly. at some point, if you need, if you like, there's some opportunity to, because you know, you can have like a almost a zero prep for player as well. Like I think, like player, like need to have know the character who they are and stuff like that, have an idea. But you define them through play as well, right? Yeah, I do like a defined setting. That is one thing that I I, I have. Oh, a I, I, I do for. as well. Yeah. But what what there's degrees of refinement though. There's like you define it on like a global scale and you keep the details vague. And there's like I have every detail planned out and there's like no room for uh, change and uh, spontaneity. All right, uh, one second. We don't have to be that pensive about it next one. So, no, I got, I got a couple <laughs> things going on in the background. So, it's my bad. I'm still listening to you guys though. Yeah. Uh, Next super chat is uh, running no prep riffs right now, and I ask the players to create short term goals, near term goal, accomplish in a year or two, and long term goal. That's easy. Became a juicer, kick ass as juicer. Continue to kick ass as juicer. Detox. There you go. Those are my those are my goals. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Next. Those are your real life goals. <laughs> Detoxing, yes. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Zolinar, for what the heck is a CHF? What is that? Frank? Is that Swiss Frank? Uh, Czechoslovakian farts. Um, question. <laughs> From Switzerland, so that, that might be Swiss Frank. I mean, it's worth. Uh, yeah, it is Swiss Frank. Yeah. Swiss Frank. Okay. Uh, what was your? By the way, Switzerland. When I went there, it's got to be the most expensive country on the planet. I lived in the Middle East with all the oil money, and things weren't as expensive as Switzerland. I was like, oh my god! It's like I had to you know, just to rent a car and to get a hotel. I felt like I had to mortgage a house. <laughs> anyway, uh, question: What was your best prep session? And do you think it would have been better if you had cut it down? If you'd cut down on the prep. And thank you for the show, Matt. You're welcome for the show. Uh, got a lot of good topics out there. Check out the Some Rand RPG live stream Discord. And if this is something that people want us to address again with a different panel or with different questions, let me know. Uh, absolutely no topic is off limits just because we did it once. Okay, guys, what is your uh, best prep session? And do you think it would have gone better if you'd not prepped? Uh, for me, it was a Call of Cthulhu game. And so to me, it was like every session within that, that campaign went on for like a year and a half we just had a lot of fun with that one and it was very high prep and i think just because of the nature of call of cthulhu i don't think i could have zero prepped that one better uh than than if i had prepped it so um but it was a lot of fun it was a whole like uh investigating a monster and they went to like an indian reservation and mists and fogs and it was it was cool we had a lot of fun playing it do you think it would have gone better had it was been had it been zero prep or if you'd had less prep I, it's hard to say um because this was like years ago i was still a, really into prep and all that stuff so okay um but i just have i have very fond memories of that that call of cthulhu campaign um i don't know if it would have been better i think i think at the time it would have been worse maybe now if i were to reattempt something like that which i've been thinking about doing maybe i could do it better but I'm, I'd have to, I'd have to just try it and see. I guess <laughs> that's okay. part of the fun of it. I guess it's just like, oh, well, let's just try it. If it crashes and burns, it crashes and burns. <laughs> exactly. 
uh, Vic and, Ma- and Mr. Max. By the way, it's a five dollar, not a twenty dollar. So you're not forced to answer if you don't have anything to add. But if you want to, go I, ahead. I, with Frank, we know what that is. <laughs> Probably fifty dollars. Who knows? Not yeah. green. So, got anything you want me to move on? Uh, no, um, probably one of my uh, Savage Worlds games that I ran, and it was kind of like a pulpy, like 1930s, was a little, little bit of Lovecraft elements and stuff like that. But uh, again, it comes down to uh, Zero Prep is good for certain systems, and it's not as good for other systems or playstyles. Um, so that, you know, if I run a Savage Worlds game, I have a very pulpy mindset. There's a very, like, clear goal, like, you're adventurers in the Himalayas, and you're searching for the Eye of Kukundu or whatever. Like, you know, so... That wouldn't be very zero prep. I would, I would, I would plan stuff. I would have like you know uh, maps and stuff like that. But this is the kicker. It could easily lead into a zero prep type of campaign. What, what, what if the characters after they finish that adventure they decide like, hey, we're gonna explore the rest of uh, you know uh, the Himalayas and and uh, India and like China and stuff like that. Maybe then it turns into a zero prep game. Like it's not a zero sum game. You know, it's fun. It's funny as that sounds. No pun intended. (laughs) But uh, like, just because you start off with prep doesn't mean that it always has to be prepped and vice versa as well. Mm -hmm. Just because you start off with zero prep doesn't mean that later you don't want to maybe do some prep. So, okay. Yeah, it's not something that you have to commit to life or that. For me, like, it's been so long since I've, like, I've gave away on prep, basically, right? Just like that. I don't have an, like, I don't have memory of, like, good, uh, and like better, what does it mean better? Like, would the session have been better, or would I have had would I have had more fun? Right, that's also the question, right? For me, like I said, the fun is a lot in the coming up with stuff as I go, right? So yeah, if I'm okay. putting work for myself, that's not improving anything for me. <laughs> I'm lazy. Dol- Dolly Pop four ninety nine says uh, having no prep means that the uh, that the story unfolds is a product of everyone's creativity rather than only one person. It's a beautiful thing. I agree with that. Screw that. Game Master <laughs> Supremacy. Screw the players. No. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a I'm, I'm sorry. I'm handling my inner heathen dog there. My bad. <laughs> no, well, there's definitely degrees, though, because like I've said before, me as the Game Master, I am ultimately in charge of the world. So you're not right, going like, right. to modify my world into crazy ways. You know, so. Yeah. I don't believe that's it's our world. I don't believe it's my world. I think I believe like it's the, it's the campaign world, right? Yeah, the character well, the living that, world, you know, it's their world. Well, I, I believe it's the world, but pardon me for stealing of the name of a book. But I'm the arbiter of that world yeah. as the game master, and as a player, I am a uh, I'm a participant in that world. But I don't control it, and the world the world is greater than every player. That yeah, that's your specific job as a GM. It's like if you play Monopoly and you're the bank. It's your job to like handle the money. Like players can't just like reach in and just grab all the money they want. Like you know, it's your job. Is that, to... is that what you do when you play Monopoly? Yeah, well, at least you that's play play with an adult. Adult. like oh, I just pass go. Let me grab two hundred bucks from the banks. Like you play with well, people yeah, you trust. Well, you, yeah. you play it the four D way, and we all know that it's the wrong way. So <laughs> <laughs> he role plays the cat as he's going yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's. Uh... <laughs> Come on here. Uh, so what are we? Oh, that's right. We're going to be going into our final segment, our final video in just a moment here. As soon as I find. Boop. There we go. If you're enjoying this discussion, please like the video. Subscribe to all of the panelists channels, which you can find in the description. I've received a whole ton of compliments on Discord and direct messages uh, saying that they're really liking this panel, really liking this show. So uh, obviously we're doing something well here and we're going to keep it going on for one more video, one more segment. And I appreciate everybody's comments on this and all the super chats that have uh, popped in. So look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.